Hey, it's Matthew Flamini, you are in Performance Matter, and today we have with us Charlie Peters, which is a three times world champion of Muay Thai. Welcome, Charlie. How are you? Thank you, Matthew. I'm good. I'm good. Thank you. Thank you very much for being here. A uh, little background about myself, like you just said, three time Muay Thai world champion, and I'm a current UK number one. I've been fighting for around 14 years, so I think I started at the age of 17. Before that, I was working in a salon as a fully qualified hairdresser. I lived over in Thailand for a couple of years, which is actually where I fought and won my first world title. Upon returning back from Thailand, I basically lived at my gym. I worked there as a PT, taking individual PTs and group classes, but it enabled me to train twice a day, so I got to live the life in Thailand, in England. And then that just opened up so many more doors. I was able to fight a lot more. I fought all over the world. I fought on live TV, recorded TV, a lot of different countries. And that's basically what's led me here today, you know, 14 years of it. And now I'm here with you. Amazing. Amazing. So thanks a lot for, for sharing your experience. I mean, so let's start with, because for me, what's interesting is like, how did you manage to go from, I would say, one career? Because as you were saying, was working in a, in a hair salon and then you ended up I mean, being like a world champion, like one of the best in your category. So tell us a little bit what, what happened, you know, and how was the transition and what happened also mentally for you to say, you know what, I'm turning the page on, turning one page and I'm opening a new one. That was exactly how it was about turning a page. Uh, I mean, it goes back to when I was at secondary school. I used to play rugby. I was very good at it, loved it. It was a great passion of mine and I played for a club outside of school. I worked as a Saturday boy at the salon just to make means and ends, you know, just to earn a little bit of money for a Saturday job. But my dad kind of convinced me to get an apprenticeship because if I learn to cut hair, then I've effectively got a skill for life. And yeah, I mean, you know, the opportunity to work with 32 women and just me did definitely help, you know, the decision. Uh, and I, I don't regret it at all. And literally at that time of becoming a a full-time apprentice I had to stop playing rugby mm -hmm. literally at that transition period I found Muay Thai and Muay Thai was to help me with my fitness for rugby okay mm -hmm. it was just an added fitness that I could do during the week when I wasn't playing rugby mm -hmm. so at that transition period I couldn't play rugby because I had to work and Muay Thai started at 7 p.m I finished work at 6 p.m perfect you know I could go to it and I remember going the first time I got hooked and I literally mm -hmm. went every other day after that. And I started to enjoy it. I had my first fight after three months of joining the club. I ended up uh, getting like fighter of the night. It was only an amateur show, right? But um, mm -hmm. you know, I got fighter of the night. It encouraged me. My dad's done a little bit of white collar boxing. So we had that where we kind of worked with each other and spoke a lot about it. That definitely had an impact. Mm -hmm. And I think, as it kind of progressed, I was working at the salon. I enjoyed it with the creativity side. Then I was fighting on the weekends when I could get days off or what have you. And then, okay, after I finished my apprenticeship, I could have some time out. So I mm -hmm. saved up to go live to Thailand because I thought, listen, if I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it properly. Mm -hmm. And if you're unaware in Thailand, they have a lot of training camps. You can stay there and you basically just eat, sleep and breathe. Muay Thai, train mm -hmm. twice a day six hours a day in total and you're basically your, your knowledge just grows uh, incredibly so anyway i took myself along there i was there for around two years when i came back went back into the salon mm -hmm. and basically my, my, my trainer gave me this crossroad he's like you could come and work at the gym pt train twice a day and we can fight or you know you can do what you're doing and do 50 50. Mm -hmm. so it literally was like a crossroad do i focus on becoming a really good hairdresser or do i focus on becoming a really good fighter mm -hmm. and hairdressing i could go back to when i'm 35 mm -hmm. fighting at 35 just as much as a, a football player right you're not going to be mm -hmm. as good as you were at 17 18 so i literally took a deep breath and went okay let's give it a go and that was literally amazing. it amazing amazing and what I really like with this, with, with your story and the um, story also from other athletes is, is the fact that, I mean, you come from like, uh, 
I mean, we come from nowhere. And then, you know, with hard work, determination, and also a lot of passion and a lot of risk, because for you, I'm sure, it was a very difficult decision to say, well, you know what? I mean, I'm going to live like one aspect of my life and I'm going to focus on, on something which is a little bit of unknown because you didn't have any clue if you were going to succeed or not. But I feel like it's a story. It's an amazing story because, again, it gives an opportunity for people to, to, to think that if they have dreams, if they have desires, if they have ambition, they can succeed. And it doesn't mean you have to come from a privileged background to be able to, to achieve that dream. So I think that's very inspiring. And, and again, congratulations. So now let's speak. Let's speak a little bit about, about the journey. I mean, I come from a, a football background. I mean, I can tell you a little bit about, about how our how, how every day looks like, but I would love to hear about your every day. I mean, how does it work? What time you wake up? What do you eat in the morning? How many hours do you train? Do you train once a day? Do you train twice a day? What are the learning? What have you learned? Because giving advices and being able to, to share some something which you have learned in a book is, is obviously interesting, but when you have tried it, when you have experienced it, when you have failed and when you have, when you have learned, I think it's, it's important to also be able to share that experience. So tell us about you, your everyday life as, as, a, as a professional fighter. Yeah, so everything you just said, you know, it's amazing at what you have to learn and how quick you have to learn it. And literally every fighter is different. I've trained with so many different fighters who will live a completely different life and have a completely different diet. So when I went full time, I believe I was around 22 years old. So I started at 16, 17, went full time at 22. So I'd had, uh, I'd, ha I'd had many years of testing and trying, but like anything, each year changes. Each year brings a different, a different problem that you've got to try and solve. So when I went full time, a typical day for me, I'd get to the gym for around 8, 9 a.m. I would PT one to two people. Then at 10 o'clock, we'd go for a run. Uh, it depends on how many people turned up. I used to always run, so I'd run around five miles a day. Same route, pretty boring, on the road or in the woods. Then come back at 11 o'clock, we'd have a group session. And again, this is subject to how many people turn up. But my coach at the time, Kieran Kettle, he'd always put on such a, a great class and the class would would either involve sparring bag work pad work or what's called dutch drills where you're both wearing gloves and shin pads and you're basically punching and kicking each other with control so it's a bit different to sparring but that session would be about an hour and then you'd involve some sort of snc like press ups sit ups uh kieran was very old school so he never believed in gym sessions as such so once i finish that at 12 i'd maybe have a quick three four minute shower and then i'll go back back to teaching again uh, pts were an hour long sometimes i could have eight pts a day at seven o'clock second session starts pretty much i'd always have a pt at six o'clock so literally as soon as i've finished teaching them get my sparring gear on and it would either be a sparring or a bag work session again that session would be around 90 minutes long after that, I'd go home, and then that was where my routine kicked in. I used to live on my own. I would walk in, I'd cook my food, cook my lunch for the next day. Once that's prepping, I would usually run a bath, uh, and I'd have Epsom salt baths, because for me, that was a, a fantastic way of recovering. The food aspect, I found it better to take my own food in, so I would have to prep that. And I always try and say to people who ask me for diet advice, the diet's easy. You need vegetables, you need a bit of carbohydrates, you need protein. You know what's bad and you know what's good. Mm -hmm. Like it's, you know, the, it's not rocket science. So as long as I had a, you know, a good group of vegetables, fish, chicken, turkey, and then a nice bit of carbohydrate. One thing I will say though, as a fighter, you're constantly worrying about your weight mm -hmm. and I used to take fights left, right, and center. So if I got a call and they said, do you want to fight in two weeks? And I had to lose five kilos. You had to make sure that your diet was on point. So you used to cut out your carbohydrates quite a lot, which now with my, my new knowledge over years, I've realized it's actually quite a bad thing, especially if you want the, the, the sports performance. We're going, to, so, we're, we're going to discuss, I mean, like, because <laughs> okay. you, you're giving me a lot of, I mean, like very precious information and I want to extract even more information from, from you. So let's start, let's focus first on, 
on a practice because I think practice is very important. Then after, I definitely want to talk about like different, definitely like yeah. nutrition because like you just mentioned also like the weight for you was very important and also how do you control it? What do you cut in order to lose some weight? Because a lot of people also are wondering how you kind of achieve that, but to yeah. do it also like a healthy way because a lot of people are cutting everything and then you start starving and it's not good. And also the recovery, I think it's very important. So if we speak about the, I mean, purely the, the effort, I mean, the exercising, let's say, all this, how many hours at the end of the day you were, you were working like in terms of like fitness and, and, and hard, hard work, I would say. Yeah, I mean, in England, it was around three and a half hours. That's mm-hmm. with work as well. So I'd mm-hmm. always run, always run for an hour, always train in the morning for an hour and, in, and the same in the evening. And that was pretty much Monday to Friday. Monday to um, Friday. Monday to Friday. Usually Saturday, I'd have a day off, give or take. And then Sunday, I'd always run. I'd always do some form of training. Because for me, it was a great day. You know, it's a rest day. I've got nothing on. I can wake up, go for a yeah, nice yeah. run. And you were fighting. And how many? And just because we went for a run the other day. And, uh, and I really liked to also the, the fact that what's interesting to see is like, tell us a little bit of how many fights do you have? did you have a year and how many fights usually I would say like a, a normal fighter is having because that's also interesting to see how you prepare yourself because that's the yeah. difference with us we're having games every week and if you play at the top level you have games every three days so we do yeah. as much as we can in terms of preparation but after it's all about the recovery so it's interesting to see also in Muay Thai and in boxing is like how do you guys prepare because I don't think you have fight every week it would be impossible so that's interesting to hear uh, that aspect also. Well, you say you don't have to fight every week. When I lived in Thailand, I had three fights in one month, in four wow. weeks. The, wow. um, that was that was a little bit too much. And for the third fight, my body caught up with me. I think I, I won the first two by knockout. So then I was like, listen, I'm good. Like, you know, let's fight again. So he's like, okay, cool. We've got you a good fight. And basically training continued. In Thailand, it's a lot harder because you have the heat, you have the diet, you, everything's so different. I, me as a foreigner, as a Westerner, I'm not used to that. I would be training within three minutes of turning up, I'm sweating. Whereas the Thai boys, for instance, they won't be sweating after an hour. It's just ridiculous because they're so used to it. Mm-hmm. In England, so th- let's give people an idea. I've had just under 70 professional fights. Mm-hmm. Okay, just under 70 professional fights. Professional means, yes, I've got paid for some, but then it also means no, no shin pads. So we just wear gloves, gum shield, and a groin guard. So I've just had under, just under 70. In Thailand, in 12 months, I had 16. But my most in England has been nine. And that particular year, I think I had the most fights any UK fighter had had. And that was like fighting in France. I fought in Dubai. I fought in Canada. And that obviously, you know, it's like when you uh, when you play abroad. You know, you've got the time difference. You've got this. You've got that. And for me, I had the weight. Traveling. Yeah. So I mean, like the average person nowadays, very few fighters fight a lot. So on average, you're looking at maybe two, maybe maybe three a year. Wow. I, I I think yeah, maybe two or three a year. I would have at least a minimum of five. Nine was just a, just a good year. Lots of fights, lots of shows. Mm-hmm. And my trainer at the time, Kieran, you know, he was just putting us out there. You know, it was great. Couldn't have asked for anything better at the time. So in terms of recovery, mm-hmm. when I fought nine times a year, it was literally train for four weeks, rest for one. Train for four weeks, rest for one. But my rest week, I was still training. <laughs> Because, you know, I loved it. I enjoyed it. And I don't know if it's, it's, it's the same as football because, I mean, you're still good, right? For me in fighting, when I don't have a fight, that's when I improve and get better. Because you haven't got the stress, you haven't got the worry, and you can enjoy it. So you can, you can mess up. You can, you can, I don't know, lose a sparring match. You know, you can let someone get the better of you. And there won't be any pressure. But then when you're in a fight camp, as soon as you're not performing as best you can, that's it. Everything's out of the window. You know, and it's the worst fight camp ever. 
And what I used to find being in my gym, a lot of fighters used to use it as a fat camp. So they'd have eight weeks to fight, but the majority of it would be just losing weight. You know, for me, I had to try and, I always tried to stay around my fight weight and I never had to use, lose too much. But one time I came back from a holiday in America where I was there for two weeks, even though I was training every day, I still came back, got offered a fight in three weeks in France and I had to lose 10 kilos. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay, so tell us, so because I'm interested about that, so tell us what the small tricks I would say to kind of like lose some weight, I would say, but like the uh, healthier way, you know, it's like not like by starving yourself or at least by having to do some, uh, some, some unsafe things. So what would be your advice on that aspect? Don't eat chocolate. <laughs> that was that was a big difference for me. As soon as I as soon as I cut out the chocolate, I'd lose a lot of weight. I don't I have, I have an extremely bad chocolate uh, addiction. What what people don't realize is is the little stuff that they eat that adds up. So the best way to do it safely, I always say to people like focus on good meals. Mm -hmm. If you focus on good meals, you're less likely to eat crap. And that's a big thing. A lot of people don't realize that. And then people will say, I don't eat crisps, for instance. I, I haven't eaten crisps in years because I've never been allowed to snack on it. So if I was to snack, it would be fruit. It would be an apple or nuts. Mm -hmm. So I've never had crisps. And the reason I have such a sweet tooth for chocolate is because when I did eat it, I'd eat it by a kilo, two kilos at a time. Like I would, it'd be ridiculous. Because I would literally, fight week, I'd cut it out, obviously. But four weeks before the fight, I won't have anything like that. Mm -hmm. So once you really focus on a cleaner diet, that's what a lot of people don't realize. People will have too many fats or too many carbs, not enough protein. Mm -hmm. And you've got to remember your, your neat. For instance, a lot of people just sit down, do, don't do a lot of stuff. I'm walking around. We're, we're very active people anyway. Mm -hmm. so it, for us it's quite normal but for a lot of other people they're not as active but yet they still eat too many calories for that mm -hmm. so when people used to ask me about losing weight I used to say to them make sure you have carbohydrates mm -hmm. because most people cut out carbohydrates and that really is pretty unsafe the reason people cut carbohydrates out is because for every molecule of carbohydrate you hold three molecules of water Mm -hmm. So people cut their carbohydrates out, they lose water. Guess what? You look a little bit thinner. But it does nothing for your performance. So you can listen. I had no carbohydrates once for like nine days. It's, yeah, it's not healthy. It's not good, and and I definitely wouldn't advise so it. So what type of carbohydrates would you recommend for people? I mean, would you say some some are better than others, or would you go for some and avoid others, or all of them you think are are, are good? I think it's all in quantity. Um, and I, and I know that sounds a bit cliche, but there's no reason you can't have chips. You know, it depends on how many you're having. It depends what you're having with them. And it also depends on your training. Uh, you know, I, I can have chips if I've had a really good training session in the morning. What people don't realize, this is the best, this is the best analogy. People will have a salad and think this. No, no, no. So let's do it the other way around. People will eat a burger or a pizza or chips and think they're fat. Or think they're getting fat but flip it around if you have one salad you're not going to lose weight like that you know so it, the problem is is that people will have burger and chips three times a week without realizing it and then they'll have one salad in that whole seven days and think why am i not losing weight whereas if you flipped it the other way around and you had salad three four times a week and then you had the burger and chips once you can get away with it yeah, I, I like right. I like this approach. That's a, I mean that's also I mean what I like to say. Let's say during the week I like to eat super healthy, focusing on fruit, vegetables, and uh, mm -hmm. and uh, that's that the main uh, the main food I'm having during the week. But then when it comes to weekend, I also like to allow myself like maybe a dessert or maybe like a, mm -hmm. um, a meal which I will maybe not have usually. But like you say, if you if it's the opposite, if you have pizza, chips french fries like three times four times a week and one time you have you have a salad then obviously the, there is no secret i mean like yeah. it's a it's an issue so i think it's all about what you're trying to say is all about having a balanced balanced diet which means like fruit vegetables 
like a bit a bit of protein and then you know what once a week when you know we can maybe i mean you you exercise and you feel good you know once per time then you can you can introduce like some some pizza or like some oh, definitely some, the, yeah. the thing that people find is is the consistency <laughs> you know you you've lived the life of an athlete and no doubt you enjoy the healthy lifestyle because mm -hmm let's just say after a game you you might have a couple of days where you're eating rubbish and you start to feel mm -hmm. slow lethargic and you're just not mm -hmm. yourself mm -hmm. right now i don't necessarily have to worry about my weight but i still eat really healthy i still make sure i eat really healthy just because i enjoy it and i like it but if i want a bit of chocolate tonight i'll have some yeah. you know if i want a pizza at the weekend i'll have one but without people really and this this is how I get my balance. I'll be like, Do you know what? I'll have a pizza on Sunday night. But I'm going to go for a nice run on Sunday morning. That's my balance. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not that I have to run to have that pizza. But for me, it's like, okay, well, I want to go for a nice run and I really want a pizza. So why not make it work for myself? But going back to your question about carbohydrates, any carb is good. Obviously, you've got bad carbs like pizza from Domino's. Pizza's not bad for you. Right? Stone baked pizzas, like, it's not bad food, but Domino's is, you know? Mm -hmm. So uh, I cook a lot myself. And mm -hmm. one reason I cook a lot is because I want a pizza. So if I make it, there's less salt, there's less rubbish, there's less crap mm -hmm. in it, and it's actually yeah. healthy. So you're, you trying to avoid, you're trying to avoid all, I would say, the processed food, all the processed food, everything which is modified. And that's something which people need to know. I mean, the reality is like, everything which you buy which is already prepared i mean who god knows what inside so i mean for i mean usually for carbohydrates usually what i go for is like rice quinoa you know this type of pasta you can have some pasta i mean like this type of things which has less modified and less processed because obviously you reduce the amount of i would say of like uh, harmful chemicals or harmful products which you can find yeah no, 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 definitely. I mean, I love, I love Asian food. So mm -hmm. I usually have rice with everything. Yeah. You know, and, and the, the sad thing with London is that every, everything comes with chips, you know, yeah. and, and the, the quick, easy food is always three, four pounds, whereas the nicer food is eight, 12 pounds. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, I, that's I, I agree, but let me challenge you on that one. Go ahead. I mean, what, what I've experienced is... I think slowly, slowly that's changing because, and that's what I also want people to, to think twice about that. Because if you have a bit, a bit of rice, you have a bit of, of salad, a few tomatoes. I mean, I think, you know, you, you still can, you still can have a, a decent meal for not a too expensive, I would say, a too expensive uh, expenditures, I would say. So I think you, you, you should be able to find these days, obviously, if you go for organic, I fully agree with you. I mean, yeah. then it's still, it's still very expensive and that's still like, a, I would say, a privileged category of people who can afford that. But mm. if you want to have a healthy meal, which means like a bit of proteins, a bit of carbohydrates, a bit of fruit and vegetables, I mean, I think this day you should be able to, to do that. What, what do you think? I agree with you. I do make you right. However, mm -hmm. sometimes the availability mm -hmm. of those kind of restaurants are few and far between. Mm -hmm. that's my that's my problem with it because i always try and look for say an, a leon for instance mm -hmm. a leon yeah. is, is very nice because it's rice it's chicken it's got a bit of salad but they're not everywhere a mcdonald's and a pret is mm -hmm. you know then it becomes a little bit more difficult and i was in pret the other day and it's like for a pot of fruit it's three pound wow. you know and, and, and you just think three pound for a, a pot of fruit which if i bought the fruit individually as mm -hmm. a whole I'd probably spend one pound twenty, mm -hmm. you know, and I've got a small pot that's cost me mm -hmm. three pounds. So, I, I mean, I definitely agree with you, but also, I think people are a little bit more lazy for it. So, you and I would go out of our way, you know, I'd walk the extra zero point eight miles to go to a Leon if there wasn't one there. But unfortunately, a lot of people are like, ah, oh, all right, well, let's just go here, mm -hmm. you know, and because it's easier. People don't always like going that extra mile if, if you like yeah so i think capital health is very important and i really encourage people to kind of like do this extra effort which sometimes definitely can can feel like a pain but on the long term you know these small changes every day when you make the effort to kind of like eat healthy and have i would say a balanced life 
I mean, that's one thing on the long term, which you can, you definitely take advantage of that. Because again, what I personally think, and I'm sure you have experienced that for us, because our life is designed around the performance, because it's all about how can I stay away from the industry and uh, injury? How can I improve my performance? It's all about the prevention. And prevention, I mean, is part of like eating healthy. So that's the type of message we want to, we want to pass. No, definitely. And I think, uh, I mean, we've spoke about Unity before, and I think what Unity is doing is, is amazing. It's incredible. And it's the platform that people need. And it's the platform that people will listen to because who it's coming from. You know, you can type on Google anything you want and something will come back. But there's so much rubbish out there. Who do you trust? Who do you listen to? Mm -hmm. And what I liked about what you said about the small wins, if I could just quickly brush up on that, mm -hmm. what I tell to people, like I, I didn't just wake up one day and think, okay, cool, I'm going to eat healthy, I'm going to train every day. When I actually first started fighting, I used to smoke, right? Okay, mm -hmm. I used to smoke cigarettes. And it was a funny thing that me and one of, like, a couple of the guys would do, would train. And then afterwards, we'd have a cigarette out back. It's like, you know, I, I kept it hidden from my parents as long as I could. But it was always like, you know, we'll go, we'll go training, we'll have a cigarette. It was a casual thing. And then in my head, I was like, I want to get better at this. And this is like, you know, at that young age. I remember going for my two-mile run. And I think mm -hmm. I stopped about six times. And I took, I took a pound to go and get a water at the shop halfway through it. I, you know, and then... I'd keep running that two mile. And then all of a sudden I'd stop maybe four times, then twice. And then I'd be like, okay, I'm not going to stop this time. And that was the small win, but it might've taken me, I don't know, three, four months, mm -hmm. you know? So now that two mile run is now a warm up, and I can go out and I can go do a 10 mile run, but I can do a 10 mile run now after 14 years. Mm -hmm. And it is, it's all about celebrating the small wins. You have to mm -hmm. have the big win. You have to appreciate the small ones as you go on. I get a lot of people comment me on my technique with my punches, my kicks. Oh, it looks beautiful. You make it look so easy. And listen, you can relate with kicking a football. I, you know, I, I kick a football like I dance. Not very well, let's put it that way. But I can kick because I've done a thousand of them, you know, in a week. Uh, but four years, uh, sorry, 14 years ago, my kicks weren't that good small wins doing it over and over again and it's the same with diets cut the crap out start eating healthier a little bit every day mm -hmm. you know someone who's got an unhealthy diet i say do this and it, you know this could be like a small win thing have one healthy meal a day whether it's mm -hmm. breakfast lunch or dinner that's up to you and then once you've done that for a couple of weeks make one day healthy or if that's too much make two meals mm -hmm. so you can have lunch and a dinner and you can have a mcdonald's breakfast then once you've done that, you make the day. Okay. Now you try and make three days a week healthy, two days, whatever you want. And, and slowly people start realizing, I feel amazing eating really good. Mm -hmm. And then when I have my crap day, I feel awful. Mm -hmm. You know, and ironically, they're going to train better when they've eaten healthy as they would when they eat unhealthy. And I think it's, it's, it's teaching people to understand that, that you didn't become a success when you played at arsenal at 18 years old you weren't the success then you were the success at eight years old or six years old when you started and you got those small wins every day for 10 12 years and boom there you are yeah i mean i obviously i agree with you i mean like um, speaking uh, between athletes we we know how hard it is to, to get there but also what's important to also mention to people is i mean that's something we can be applied to everyone i mean as soon as people start to put in the routine and to implement, like you mentioning, small win, eating better, reducing the crap, uh, being able to exercise a few times a week and also working on the mental aspect because that's something I want to discuss after. But you start feeling better. You start feeling mentally like fresher and you start also, your confidence increase, you feel much more, you feel having more energy and, uh, and you feel like a different person. And that's something which applies not only to the athlete, obviously for us, it's like to an extreme because our life is designed around the performance and the better you perform, the more successful you become. But also for someone working every day, you know, you wake up, you go to the office, you have to perform a new job. If you are able to be healthier, if you are able to be sharper, more energy, I mean, you're a better human being, you're a better person, enjoy, enjoy life much better. Why not? 
why would you not want to do that? I mean, I, I talk about my dad all the time. You know, he's, he's trained for Ironman. You know, he's done oh. four Ironman and like 15 halves. And he works from 7 a.m. till 6 p.m. in a desk. You know, he's, and uh, sometimes he trains twice a day. Then he changes his diet and everything. And it's just, it is doable. It just depends on how much you want to do it, right? And, to, and it's about like, you can, like you mentioned, you know, you, you, you start with small wins. I mean, obviously, it's nice to have a, an objective. It's nice to, to know where you want to go. But you start with small changes every day and adding them one by one. I mean, when you look behind and you say, whoa, I mean, look what I've realized. I mean, it's all about, like you mentioned, we started, I mean, like, I, you know, and if you will become a, a football player, you know, maybe, and if you will become a, I mean, a world champion. I mean, and adding, you know, like step by step, you're getting there. So that's, I think it's, it's a good story to tell also like the younger generation, I mean, listening or, or, or people also like, which have dreams or people also want to change. I think that's important to mention. I mean, through small wins, through small changes, I mean, you get better and better and that, that's important. So, I know, massively. And I think, I think it moves on nicely to what you wanted to talk about, which is the, uh, the mentalness because yeah. that, that is part of it as well, I think. Yes. So, te- I mean, I'll, I, I love to, to ask you because uh, I mean playing we playing football obviously like you know, we we are giving everything and I've always been like very energetic and very passionate player and uh, I like to say uh, you know it's live or die on a pitch and you give yeah. everything but but from on your side I mean we are 11 against 11 on a pitch and uh, you're always gonna have you know some players trying to hide behind others you're going to have the ones which are maybe running a bit less than others, you know, maybe some taking less risk than others. But when you are one against one, I mean, like on the ring, you can hide and you can escape and you have to face your opponent and he's like, it's, it's your him. So how do you deal with that? Because on our side, we can hide. I mean, some players can hide. Yeah. You can't. So how do you deal with that? How do you prepare yourself mentally? And also, I mean, we are obviously, we have contact. Obviously, it's physical game football. But we are not punching each other in the face. Yeah. So I have a lot of admiration also for, for guys like you, rugby, because if it's physical or sport, I mean, new sport is even more physical. So tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's even sometimes I think, why am I doing this? Or what, what have I done? It's incredible. You know, you, you don't think of it that way until someone like yourself says it so like you just said you're on the pitch and it's like okay i'm here to die you know we're, we're going to play our hearts out that's exactly what it is with fighting you have to think you know i've I, let's just say i've trained for eight weeks for this specific fight you know I've, I've been training elbows punches you know i've been trying to knock someone out this guy is effectively doing it to me as well so he's trained to like you know cut my face with an elbow or punch me in the face but I don't, I don't, I don't get it. I mean, maybe it's the the natural gladiator that we all have, you know, whether you're in a team sport or individual. I know what I'm getting myself into, and I know what it is. There's a there's a huge element of training. Uh, we, we we spoke about it before about you mm-hmm. know the the mindful coaches or the mind stuff. You have to prepare yourself for it because, you know, it's like you jumping into the deep waters and you don't know how to swim. You have to learn. You have to, you know, have to build up to it. So what's good about fighting is you, you, you have the amateur fights, the smaller shows, the smaller crowds, the, the protection. You take the protection off. Now you've got a different element to battle with in the mind. Is this going to hurt? Et cetera, et cetera. Then slowly, as you start to get better, the crowds build up. You get used to it a little bit more. And each fight, I mean, I've had some fights where I probably haven't been there mentally and it's not turned out my night you know i've had like i said seven just under 70 fights and i think i lost about 15 15 or 17 fights so i didn't lose a lot but i lost some to some incredible fighters and sometimes it was because i lost my head maybe i didn't think i was good enough or maybe i was like oh, you know he's he's doing good and that's just what happens you know and you can probably get that in football as well you you your opponent who's playing the same position as you like he's really quick I, you know i won't be able to catch him and guess what you won't be able to catch him because it is that mind game but you want to be in training i think we touched on this before mm-hmm. if i'm sparring my partner i want him to try and hurt me because 
effectively in the fight, this guy is going to do the same. So I need to be prepared for that. And once I had a training camp in Holland, the Dutch are notoriously known to go extremely hard. Mm -hmm. They've got some of the best fighters. Sometimes they're not technically good. They're just solid and hard and they will stand through anything. You could drive a car into them and they'll be like, okay, next. Mm -hmm. So when I went there once for a fight camp, I remember training in sparring and it was harder than a fight. It was, you know, I was there for a camp. Training was just incredible. It was, a, it was an eye-opener. And I remember going into the fight thinking, this is easy. This is, this is, training was harder. And that's kind of what you want. You know, you, the less you sweat in training, uh, sorry, the more you sweat in training, the less you bleed in battle. And that's really what it was. You know, I have to have that fight scenario in my training. So then when I get to the fight, I'm like, well, I'm prepared for this. I'm ready for this. But listen, like anything at any top level, people ask me if I get nervous. Of course I get nervous. I always get nervous. Everything I've been thinking of has been for this one moment. So you want the best outcome. And not just that, you don't want to let yourself down because you want to give your best performance. Fighting is usually sometimes 70, 80% mental and the rest of it is physical. Anyone can get fit for a fight but it's about getting this ready and fit for a fight. And it's, you know, it's funny because outside of the ring, I'm the most least confrontational person. I'm so laid back. I'm so chilled. It's like, you know, it's ridiculous. But then as soon as I'm in the ring and that bell goes, all right, cool. Now we're here. Now it has to go down. But that's interesting. And I think that's also, I remember, at Arsenal, we used to have a, uh, one of our coach was Pat Rice, an ex-player, and he used to say, I mean, like, um, the training has to be, like, even harder than the game. And mm -hmm. I can tell you then at the time when I was Arsenal, I mean, the training were like battles. And um, every, every training there was an argument. Every training there was a fight. But because we're all competitors, we're all winners. And then when you're in the game, obviously things, things are, are, are much easier. But I think that's all come from the, the, the fact that I think in order to be a winner, you also need to, to believe in yourself. And yeah. that's also the message we have to tell people. I mean, I feel like these days, kids are not allowed to dream anymore, you know, or, or it's all about like, ah, oh, forget about that, that's not possible. And I think we are all examples, athletes, we're all examples and we had a dream, we believed in it, we believed in ourselves, hard work, dedication, and we have done it. So. I think that's, that's also the message we want to give is like, if you have dreams, I mean, you have to believe in it and you can achieve it. So that's, that's very important. That's very important. One, one question I have for you, because also the mental aspect is, is probably different on your side than on our side. I was saying we're playing games every three days. So for us, when we get ready, is like, obviously we have a preparation, like a pre-season, and then you start and games every three days. And when you don't play, it's all about most of the time is recovery. But for you, which let's say a normal fighter has like maybe three to four fights a year. And I'm also thinking about sprinters, you know, I mean, sprinters, yeah. I mean, like they have maybe two race, two, three race a year and they have nine seconds to basically like uh, to be successful or not. And then if they fail, they have to wait another like six months or yeah. a year to get back, you know, like into the competition. For us, it's, it's good because you miss your game, you have another one in three days. Okay, I can perform and I can on the page so for you i mean how do you prepare yourself like when you have a game let's say in two months i mean like do you start by i would say like a first phase where it is maybe conditioning a second phase which is maybe a bit more like the technique maybe a last phase where you're thinking about losing weight how will you segment all this preparation also and also the mental aspect because i mean if you start thinking about the fight i mean like uh, if you start thinking about the game too early you burn yeah. too much, too much energy. You get, you get to the game, sure. you burn out. So how do you deal with all that? Yeah. So, I mean, let's just give it, say, an eight-week fight camp. An eight-week mm -hmm. fight camp would be for someone who's you know, pretty out of shape, so they need to get in shape. So you start with, obviously, the fitness starts straight away. You can't mm -hmm. not work fitness with, with Thai boxing. So you'd work the fitness and you'd work the technique. And then after you've done two weeks of getting into the rhythm, mm -hmm. your work specifics. So, okay, you need to throw your right kick a little bit more. You need to throw your jab a lot more. So you focus on those commitments. So that's say for the, at six weeks out, four weeks out, 
okay, how's your weight? Where's it at? Right, let's change it. So let's let's cut out the bad food now. You know, let's focus on keeping it healthier. And I'd say from around four weeks to three weeks out, you start thinking about it a lot more. I mean, no matter what you're thinking about it every day, because there has to be a reason why you're getting up. And if you're staying in bed and sleeping, you're like, I'm fighting in seven weeks. Like the guy's out there running. I should be. So you always have that on your mind, which is good because you need that little bit of motivation. Just like you were saying, you play matches every three, uh, every three days. So you've got that excitement to go to train and to keep moving. But I think for me, like say four weeks out, three weeks out sometimes, then I'll start thinking about it. I don't like overthinking it because mm-hmm. it's a, what will be will be. And if I'm training hard enough, everything will come together. So there's no need to overthink it. But you definitely go to bed thinking of every possible scenario. Like I said, I used to run a hell of a lot. So guess what I'm thinking about when I'm running? Just the fight. So sometimes it was nice to see friends or family and not talk about it. You know, so you have that kind of little getaway. Like I said, I used to live on my own. So when I got home, it was like, I'll watch a few fights, build up the IQ, get the excitement going. Two weeks out, you're worrying about technique specifics. So what's going to work in the fight to beat your opponent? And then the, you know, the weight cut starts to get a lot serious. Fight week, fight week is still just as active. Fight week, your diet changes completely. Uh, I would say in the, only in the last two and a half years, I was privileged enough to have uh, a nutritionist called Justin Alama, who was amazing. He was incredible. And he changed my thought process on the whole nutrition towards the fight. And he helped me get into fight fit condition uh, weight wise for around three or four fights. But before that, it was like, right, cut out carbohydrates, but I still had to train. It, it wasn't necessarily the right way or the right thing to do, but that's what you had to do. So I'd still tr- I'd train only once a day, fight week, worry about focusing everything. And again, working the technique, working the technique. And something Kieran used to do was two days before weighing, you would have a really, really hard pad session. Now, scientifically, it was probably one of the worst things you could do. But for your own mind, it was one of the best things to do. Because if I could go through such a grueling pad session, the fight isn't going to be like that. And, you know, you could be throwing up to 200 kicks in one round. I'm definitely not going to be throwing that in a fight. You know, you, you may only throw... 15 maximum so that particular pad session and everything else would equate to that mindset so does it like you know i hope that answers it a little bit yeah no no 100 100 100 so like so so for instance sorry like just quickly so when i used to fight four weeks out i was already fit so i just had to brush up on the technique and work the weight so you know, I'd cut out so much stuff. So it's like, okay, for for me, you only get better when you haven't got the fight. So off season, if you like. Mm -hmm. So four weeks out, now I tighten up technique, tighten up the diet, you know, because not, you won't always have an eight week program. Okay. So now let's talk about the recovery because I mean, like I imagine for you guys, when you finish a game, you're, naked i mean like you must be in pain everywhere um we experience that but obviously like not to your level because uh, the the contact and impact is like 10 times bigger i would say so i would be very curious to hear what's for you like a a a recovery session and also what are the small tricks that someone can apply you know to to his everyday just to to kind of like get this pain away or like uh, or recover as soon as possible in order to start back to, to, to training? I mean, I, I'm a big advocate on, on recovery and rest. I, I promote a lot of it on my Instagram as well. So, I mean, listen, the one thing you can invest in, uh, which is worth investing, is your body, always. Um, I used to get massages every week. So every Friday I'd get a massage. If I had a niggle or a pain, I'd see an osteopath or a masseuse. So I'd always get one of those. That would definitely help. And then during the week, I'd have Epsom salt baths. And that's magnesium sulfate. Magnesium sulfate. Mm -hmm. 
And I'd put about a kilo of that in a nice hot bath, sit in there, soak. It, not only does it give you an epic sleep, it restores the magnesium lost in the muscles. And when you're sweating so much constantly, it's nice to just restore and give the body back something. And uh, sleep is obviously a big thing. Mm -hmm. Sleep is super important when you're training at such a high level. So I used to make sure that I've got good sleep, good rest, always. It's all about the, 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 the holistic approach, which is about yeah. like eating healthy, doing a bit the of small, exercise. The small yeah. wins as well. And I mean, you've been an athlete all your life. So you know your body. And again, one of the lessons I learned very early on was trying to listen to my body. And there's a fine line between feeling lazy and having to rest. You know, a lot of people think, oh, if I take this day off, you know, I'm just being lazy. But maybe you need the day off, you know, so you have to listen to your body. If I didn't want to go for a run because my legs were a bit tight, okay, I'll, I'll warm up a little bit longer, but I'll warm up differently, you know? Mm -hmm. So it's all about listening to the body as well. And if you're uncertain on a few things, give it a try. If it doesn't work, then you know. You know, you have to understand your body and you have to give yourself enough rest. My recovery sessions would be very easy runs, very easy cycles, maybe very easy bag work. I also actually found training four days later or three days later would help recovery. Mm -hmm. And I heard that it was because the blood starts flowing, the toxins start loosening up, the muscles start getting worked again. So, I mean, you know, everyone finds their own recovery. I know some people that would do absolutely nothing and just binge eat. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, usually in, in football, what we do is, like, the day after is, like, 20 minute bicycle, a bit of a pool, maybe, like, a, a very light run. Yeah. And just we let the, the, like you say, you know, I think what's very important is sometimes to just accept that, I mean, the body to recover any time. And, that, uh, and that's a natural process, which is very important. And usually like two days after, and I'm sure you guys must be the same, but two days after, that's when you feel the most, the most pain and the most yeah. like, uh, uh, the most tired, I will say. So, yeah. yeah, yeah. So that's funny to see like two things. And it's not the first day, it's usually the second day when you feel yeah. the most, the most tired. But already like if you move a little bit the day after, like small jog, a bit of activation, I mean, that's help obviously to flash, to flash all Absolutely. the... All the all the toxins and all the acidity and and all the, the all the pain out of the body. Yeah, I mean, it does. Yeah, yeah. One question because I think also I love to hear what you think about like the next generations, the next uh, the next fighters coming uh, coming up and uh, and um, I mean if if you had I will say uh, some kind of advice to give them if you had some kind of like. Um, I mean, experience you would like to share with them. I mean, like, what would it be? Because I think that's important also. I'm sure we have, like, all this next generation of guys and kids and with, yeah. with, with dreams who also want to, to succeed, who also want to, to become champions. But what would be your message? Because I'm sure you, you, you have worked very hard. You have been into a lot of pain and, and sacrifices. So what would be your advice? If you want to do it, do it. And I know that sounds really, what, is that it? I mean, I have a story once where before I went to go live in Thailand, I was at a birthday party in, in, in town. And, you know, I was with a, a group of lads and, you know, they were all having a drink. I obviously wasn't. We got talking, you know, I'm going to Thailand. Oh, why are you going to Thailand? Oh, I just want to get better at fighting. Oh, okay, cool. You know, so, yeah, I want, I'm going to become a world champion. And everyone laughed. Everyone like, yeah, 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 go on, mate, you know, like sarcastically, yeah, 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 do it. I remember this one guy looked at me and went, I think you'll do it. I said, no, I will. I know I will. You know, I had, I had everything set on it. Because if I don't become a world champion, then I'll be coming very close to one. And I've got nothing to lose but everything to gain. And I remember seeing him. I came back after 12 months for like two weeks, get a new visa and went. And I saw him in those two weeks. And I went, oh, I've done it. And he laughed. And he said, no, I know. And then, and then all of a sudden, I started seeing people that were at that party and they were like, wow, I can't believe you've actually done it. And so many people are like uh, scared to chase after things and scared because they're, they're, they worry about people's reactions. Oh, you want to be a football player? <laughs> yeah, 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 good luck, good luck. But that's, that's all you need. All you need is good luck. You know, sometimes in a fight, I'd rather be lucky than good because you can win a fight if you're lucky, right? And, and so many people listen to other people 
like don't worry about it if you want to do something do it because no one's stopping you only yourself if you let other people stop you you best believe that they're trying to do their dream you're not going to try and stop them because you have yours that you want them to succeed in as well and a lot of people find that hard i don't know why i mean we, we spoke about this before the younger generation are, are almost scared to but right now look at the resources you have around you with the with the with your website for instance coming out you've got everything you need to know okay a bit of sleep okay a bit of nutrition a bit of mindfulness just like wow i've got everything here to become a professional athlete if i want to but you just have to stick to it and also a lot of people uh, they get bummed if they don't win or you know they're, they're not picking it up as quick as they want to when i first moved to thailand i remember losing three fights in a row three fights i was train i was only training I I, I, listen i'm not a big drinker and i can probably count on one hand how many times i got drunk in thailand i was literally just training three times i lost in a row and i was just like all right next one next one i'm gonna win you know next one i'll i'll, I'll win the next one and that's how that that's how you have to that's how you have to believe so many people are, are quick to get knocked down and think oh well worth a shot and what was great about michael jordan's documentary it just showed they lost matches he missed shots people do you know that's what makes you so good and there's a quote that i really liked from a, a professional basketball player i think it was a uh, iverson and he used to train pure basic stuff real like i don't know high school for, uh, basketball and he's one of the elite best players and he said to be the best at something you have to not get bored of the basics and that's just that's the, i mean i love that it stuck with me and it's just, it's just so true if you're good at the basic stuff every day you'll get to the top and you that's just have to believe it that's the fundamentals yeah yeah yeah, yeah. the yeah, fundamentals yeah. like you know this the fundamentals the, the flashier you get the, you know that's cool in sometimes but effectively what wins a fight is either a punch kick or an elbow So you've mm. just got to get really good at those. It's like football. You know, if you're really good at taking a free kick, you're going to score a goal. So how many free kicks do you take yourself after training? Because training is good, but what are you doing after? Yeah, that's extra work. And fundamentals, I mean, can be for everyone. Because again, like we're talking about like good sleep. We're talking about healthy eating. We're talking about like a bit of exercise. So if you have some solid fundamentals, then I mean, everything is possible. And obviously like in sport at the top level, it's even more important. But, but so can we say then maybe to, to, the, to the next generation, I think dedication is important. Discipline yep. maybe is important. Also not giving up too easily because I think like failing a failure it's, it's part of the game you know it's like it's all about how many times you're going to fail before you become successful but if you haven't tried and if you don't try again you will never know if 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 you if you will be good enough to to go there so i think that's important because we also discussed it i mean before you know and we were discussing about like yes you know like if it was easy everyone will will become successful the reality is like to succeed and, and to get there. Yes, it's painful. Yes, it's a lot of work. Yes, it's a lot of sacrifices, but the reality is like, it's so beautiful once you're there. So um, okay. it takes some work, definitely. Yeah, no, of course. And I mean, if, like you said, if it was easy, everyone would do it. We always say this, but it, it is, it's that discipline. How much do you want it? Okay, we'll go out and get it. And, you know, put that work into it and have those small wins, celebrate them and, and, try and learn gain the knowledge okay maybe you don't sleep as much try and sleep more you know there's actually a really good study on they say practice makes perfect but it's good sleep makes practice perfect because when you sleep your body goes over everything that you learn so when you wake up in the morning it's almost ingrained into you a lot more and people can research that as well i remember reading it in a book called peak performance and it stuck with me as well So, yeah, I mean, listen, it's like anything, right? You have to be dedicated. You have to be disciplined. You have to get up every day and do it. So, you know, you, that's that mind game. You know, every athlete has to have a mind game. Like you said, the, the Olympic sprinters, for instance, or just any sprinter, take a 100-meter sprinter. They're, they're training for 10 seconds. Yeah. 10 seconds. You know, you're, you're playing for, what, 90 minutes or something like that. It's like 
you know, but yet the mind and the mentalness and the discipline and the sacrifices are all the same. You know, it's and, like and, and, it's like you against it's yourself. I mean, it's you against you. You against you. Yeah, uh, and it's 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 about who wins. So amazing. Listen, Charlie. I mean, thanks a lot um, for your time. I mean, I think for me, it was amazing to learn from 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 your angle. I mean, like, how do you train? How do you live the life of of a performer? Because obviously, like in, in football, you learn certain certain things, but in other other sports. I mean, you can you can learn so much more too. Also, so thanks a lot for your time. Very impressive, very inspiring, and I and I enjoyed a lot our discussion. Nah, man, thank you so much. Thank you for having me on. I've I've loved it. Enjoyed no, it. Amazing. Thanks a lot, and uh, looking forward to to catch up very soon. You take care. Yeah, man. Take care. Thank you so much. Take care. Bye bye.